Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network. Have you ever wanted to set up iSCSI binding in vSphere 5.1? Well, if you have, this video is going to show you exactly how to do that. We'll be doing it on a distributed switch using a pair of uplinks. So let's get started. On the screen in front of you, I've got my storage distributed switch shown. Now this is a lab and I share my uplinks with NFS and iSCSI, but just for the sake of pretend, Let's imagine that the only port groups you saw were this iSCSI A and iSCSI B. Let's go into the hood how that works. If I edit the setting on iSCSI A, we'll see the only thing that's really changed from stock, and you'll have to believe me on some of this, but is that I've changed it so that the only active uplink is DV uplink 1. DV uplink 2 has been dropped down to unused, and just use the move up and down to do that. If we look at iSCSI B, it's basically the exact opposite. We've got uplink 2 is active and uplink 1 is unused. Other than that, I've changed the VLAN to match my iSCSI VLAN, but it doesn't do anything else other fancy stuff than that. So that's what you need on your DB switch is a pair of port groups. Call them what you want. I use A and B uh, set so that one is using one uplink and the other is using a different uplink. You can't have any more than one active uplink on each port group. Will not work. Okay, let's move on to the host. Now I've gone ahead and put my ESX2 host into maintenance mode because I actually use iSCSI storage and I don't want to goober up any of my virtual machines. So we'll start with the networking piece. I want to go to my distributed switch. I've got my storage distributed switch shown here. And you can see those port groups, iSCSI A and B. We'll need to make some VM kernels. So I'll manage adapters, click add, new adapter, VM kernel port, We'll start with the iSCSI A. Don't check any boxes, just choose your port group and go next. And we'll put the IP in. So in this case it's 10.0.2.5.1.52 on a class C. Next and finish. Very straightforward. Now we'll need to add the other VM kernel. I'll give that a second. There we go. New adapter, VM kernel. Choose the B port. Next. Put in the IP of my B side. Now I'm using the same VLAN for all iSCSI, so it's the same subnet, 10.0.251, except uh, this one's on the fourth octet is 152. And again, it's a class C. And there we go. Pretty straightforward, right? Just build two VM kernels, same subnet, two different IPs. I'll expand it out so you can see it. Now if we did everything right, if I click on VM kernel 2, it draws this little golden line telling me that VM kernel 2 is going to use uplink 1, and VM kernel 3 is going to use uplink 2. So we've got them segregated that basically one uses its own uplink and the other one uses its own uplink. All right, so you've got that host piece configured. The last part is to go to storage adapters. And if you don't already have an iSCSI software adapter, it's not there by default, no problem. You'll want to click this Add button in the upper right corner. For me, it's grayed out because I've already added my iSCSI adapter. But if yours is active, you'll click it and you'll say, there's a little radio button, choose iSCSI software adapter and then make one. And it'll appear right here, uh, appear as VMHBA, whatever number's available. 38's my number that's available. It's always gonna be higher than 32, pretty much. So there we go. Now, for you, you're probably not gonna see any devices uh, in dead right here. This is because I ripped out my iSCSI uh, network, so it's a little teed off. Yours should be blank for the most part, hopefully. Don't do this in production. <laughs> um, so you'll click on it and then choose Properties. And we're going to go to Network Config. And you'll see right here, this is where the VM kernel port bindings are made. Port binding is just a fancy term for a relationship between a VM kernel port and the uplink that it's going to be dedicated to. So they can build kind of a nice cozy fabric here. So I'm going to click Add. Now this is where I thought you might find it interesting that we see vMotion on here. You know, why would vMotion be a choice? Well, the bindings, you know, sort of ignorant, we'll say, uh, not in a negative way, but it doesn't really know what the port group does. vMotion shows up here because I built it the same way as the iSCSI port groups in that vMotion A is dedicated to this vMNIC1 at the bottom and vMotion B is dedicated to this vMNIC2. So because they follow the rules to build an iSCSI binding, uh, they show up here as options. We don't actually want to choose them, but that's the explanation as to why they're there. So we'll start with adding iSCSI A. Just click OK. Shows up compliant. 
which means that it meets all the necessary requirements for vSphere to use it as a uh, a requirement or a compliant uh, port group. That's good. And it says not used because we haven't scanned any LUNs or anything yet, so we're not using this path. Click Add again. Choose the B port. Notice that the A port is gone because we've already chosen it. And there we go. Now we've got the A and the B, two compliant ports. So we built our fabric. We now have two ports that can be used for iSCSI traffic, and they're dedicated to their own uplink. You'll next want to go to this dynamic discovery and put in a send target address. Or if you know the targets you want to use, you can enter them in manually here. Because I put in a dynamic discovery, it's gone ahead and contacted the iSCSI server and learned about these two targets. So it's really your choice the way you want to do it. Now notice that I have two targets here. That's important for later. The configuration is done. I'm going to click close. And it's going to prompt you to rescan the host bus adapter. That's fine. Click yes. This time, or the time this takes depends on how many devices and how fast your SAN is and all that good stuff. So it's come back and we've got some very important information here. First off, it's telling us that there's four connected targets. Now, if you remember, we only saw two targets, the lab and the test, uh, for those that were paying attention. We are connected to four targets because we're using two VM kernels. So it's just simple multiplication. Two kernels times two targets is four connected targets. Additionally, we see that there's three devices here. We've got these three, three LUNs here, 300 gig, 800 gig, and 10 gig. But there's six paths to the LUNs, which is perfect because, again, it's multiplication. Three devices times two paths, or but I'm sorry, times two uh, VM kernel ports is six paths. So that means that we're on the road to victory. That's what you want to see. Uh, if you want to see all the paths, you can click the Paths button, and it'll show you how it's getting to what it's getting to. Uh, in my case, it's showing active I.O. for everything, and I'll show you why. Uh, if I go to Devices again, let's choose this first one here. Uh, by right-clicking it and clicking Manage Paths, we'll see that I've set it to Round Robin for the PSP. This isn't by default. Typically, it's most recently used, or MRU, uh, but I like to take advantage of both paths. If you want to change it, let's say back to MRU, you'd click that and then click the Change button. I'm not going to actually do it. And you can read, the information here is important too if you want to understand what's going on. The C, T, and L. It's the controller, the target, and the LUN. So because we're using multipathing here, the controller changes. This is the first uh, uplink, and this is the second uplink, so 0 and 1. But the target is 1 for both. We're connected to the first, target 1 and LUN 0. So that's telling us all good things, the fact that we're connecting to this target twice, to this LUN twice, and we're using two different controllers to do it. This is all good information. This pretty much sums up everything you need to do to get iSCSI binding working in your environment. Um, deviation from this configuration, maybe you're using uh, more than two uplinks, maybe you're using three or four. I'm not, you know, it, it depends on how many uplinks you have. Um, and how many devices you have will determine, you know, if you have more targets than I do, let's say you had four targets, it would show eight connections. Uh, if you had 10 devices, it would show 20 paths and so on and so forth. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.